hello and welcome back to another video in today's video i will be sharing with you how to quickly create unique and high quality composition notebooks with mid journey and canva later on in the video i will show you a little known ai tool that can help you with your prompt ideas and give you some inspiration of keywords you wouldn't have probably thought about when it comes to generating your ai images so stick around for that if you're new here welcome my name is rose and i make videos on how to make passive income using only a computer and an internet connection so the next step is to come to amazon and i have typed in composition notebook and as you can see it's a very competitive niche it's got over 10,000 results so it's very, very important that we niche down as much as possible. And that goes for every niche that we are trying to get into. It will always be better if you have at least a thousand results, which shows not too much competition, but there's still good demand in that niche. To niche this further down, I'll be using a free tool, the AMZ Suggestion Expander, just so I can get a few more ideas of keywords. But just to note, this is not a complete complete in-depth research tutorial. I have done a KDP research video in the past and I will link it in the description below. I will just give you a very quick overview of my thought process when it comes to getting into a new niche. The root keyword is Constant Notebook and using AMZ Suggestion Expander, we are able to now have an extension of the basic keywords that Amazon would have provided on this first column. AMZ Suggestion Expander will give us keywords that are typed before the word composition notebook and keywords that are typed after so i will look around and see if there's any keyword that interests me and i see the word aesthetic appearing twice so it must be quite a popular general keyword i like to start a little bit general and then i narrow down as i go i'll go with aesthetic it just means they want a beautiful cover and that actually reduces the search results to just about 3000 under that i will just have a quick look and see what comes up we see the college road butterfly vintage botanical so there's botanical keywords there there's pink blush and all these books are using the keyword aesthetic but then they narrow down to other keywords like vintage vintage butterfly botanical so we keep going there's a tool that i use to also be able to see the product details in a snapshot called ds amazon view going on to look for some other words we could add i see vintage comes up again astronomy vintage botanical it's vintage illustration so i will actually add the keywords vintage botanical and illustration and see what that gives us so i have now come on and put composition notebooks botanical vintage illustration and that's narrowed down to only about 469 results good enough to show me what is selling when we further niche down to just the keywords that most people have used on the first page which is botanical vintage illustration and then we'll see what else we can actually add on there i am going to combine plants and butterflies and see what we get the other thing i like to do is um when i see a book that's doing really well this book is only it's less than a year on amazon but it's already got 57 reviews and they're all five star i like to click on such books to see products related to this item but more importantly this is the feature i like to look at once i've clicked on a very popular book in the niche i'm researching i'm able to see a lot more information that i wouldn't be able to see on the first page of amazon so there's two rows of information here there's products related to this item which normally don't always have reviews so you couldn't quite say how well they're doing but this is what i most like to pay attention to customers who viewed this item also viewed now that says that the customers who would have bought this item who are interested in the botanical illustration vintage type book would also be very interested in buying whatever else appears here so for example i start to see bees i see frogs so we start to see animals that we could actually niche down into this particular niche so other than just having composition notebook botanical vintage illustration i could add butterflies i could add bees frogs it could be birds 
that all very relevant to the botanical theme. You can see we've got almost eight pages of this particular part. What's so good is they take the cream of the crop and they show us books that have been proven. That's the best part of this. If you look at all these books that are showing up here, they all have amazing reviews. Granted, some of them we are not looking to compete straight away at reviews ranging from 122 to 206. What's actually interesting and inspiring is that these books a lot of them, if you click on them, haven't been on Amazon for longer than a year. So it's very easy to enter some of these niches, bring something different and be able to actually rank your books. So that's the beauty of coming to this section here. These are books that wouldn't have appeared on the first page, but actually they're selling really well and they haven't been in the market for a very long time if you clicked into each one of them. That's a pro tip when you're researching on Amazon. If you find a book that is doing really well, it will lead you you onto so many others that are doing well in that niche but they may not be as competitive but obviously like i said it's not an in-depth research video i have done that before i will link that video for you but i thought this pro tip is something i haven't shared in the past but it's worth looking into this. We are now on Mid Journey. For those who are brand new to Mid Journey, I would probably start in the newbie rooms, come into Mid Journey and pick one of these newbie rooms. And that way you're able to see what other people are working on. I do find it quite inspiring to actually be able to see what's possible, but I would actually then swiftly move on to getting my own bot or be in your own room, so to speak. So you can actually be able to focus on on what you're working on and that's by upgrading to a paid membership but this is definitely a very good place to start and just to give you a really quick idea of the main commands on mid journey you've got the u1 to u4 which means upscale one to upscale four and the way the images are numbered is one two three four and upscale just means you want to enlarge the image so it's more detailed it's much more clearer for this example this image which is u1 was a scaled and that's what you're looking at now so it's much more clearer it's much more detailed and you're able to see what's going on once you've done your upscale you then are able to see a lot more commands just below the upscale and those are things you can come on here and play with and see what they do v1 to v4 means variation 1 to variation 4 again they're numbered in the order 1 2 3 4 and you just want to see a variation of say number 1 where the bot will generate very similar images within that theme of image one and usually they're very similar with very subtle differences this symbol just means repeat that prompt and generate something else using the same exact prompt instead of copying and pasting it you just click on that and it reuses that prompt to generate another four images i would come and play around and learn how to use this but i wouldn't actually stay here very long if you do have a project in mind and you know what you want to produce for your kdp projects i would get my own board and get into your own room where you're able to focus on just what you're working on and the last thing to show you is how you type in your command click on forward slash and that brings up all different options what you want is forward slash imagine click on that and so the prompt is now ready for you to type in whatever you would like for example botanical flora illustration and then click enter this is what my very simple keywords botanical floral illustration has brought up now i'm going to go on to my bot where i have already got my own room and you'll be able to see what i have been working on in a moment this is just a quick overview of the images i was able to generate using the basic keywords we found on amazon with just a few variations to those keywords and i'll show you how that developed so i started off with just colorful floral vintage botanical illustration so the base keyword vintage botanical illustration those remained and just adding a few things like large butterflies pattern kept going with that if you've used mid journey for any period of time you will notice how interestingly the same keywords would bring very very different images so for example vintage botanical illustration floral pattern same keyword but it may tend to be very different images if you're 
struggling for prompt ideas and what keywords to use and you find yourself just stuck with the same keywords and you just want some ideas and inspiration i'll show you in a minute where i go for my prompt ideas and inspiration i used that tool moving forward from this point as you can see my images started to pop and you will notice they still have a vintage look to them but they are actually a bit more colorful so for example this is colorful vintage botanical wildflowers butterflies pale black paper very detailed and on and on it goes so we still kept it the vintage theme things like flowers and butterflies but i was able to get a lot more ideas that I could actually use to start producing so much better quality images. I'm going to show you in a minute where to get your inspiration for prompts. If you sometimes find you're struggling or are stuck for prompt ideas, Lexica is very similar to Mid Journey, but I do find it's a bit more organized and almost works like a search engine for images where you can then get prompt ideas because the images will come with their prompts. The way to go about this is I would come on here and type in the keywords for the project I'm working on and then um, just keep looking and see if anything catches your eye and then look at that prompt and see what it brings. It's one of these prompts that I looked at and I started to get ideas like wildflowers, pale black paper, very detailed illustrations. So if I click on this for example you're able to then come and copy the prompt and you can then go and use it on your image generation software. The ideas are endless and they're all very different. I would actually avoid the names of popular artists for ethical reasons but also to stay clear of copyright issues. I found this very useful and that's how I was able to produce what I felt was really high quality vintage images that have pop and color. They still remain quite in line with the theme of vintage as after for this particular example project. I decided to upscale some of the images that I found interesting that I can go ahead and use to create my composition notebook and these are some of the choices that I went for. If you mouse over the image you will see the three dots then you are able to save the image and just saving the image means you have downloaded the image it's all nice and ready to go but there's one more step before we use this image because the more you enlarge these images from the mid journey they become pixelated so when we upload them to canva where we're going to be creating our book cover we may need to enlarge them the solution to that is to use an image enlarger to keep the quality of the image so i'm going to upload the to one of the image enlargers that I decided to use. The image enlarger that I am going to be using is called Big JPG. If you just type that into any search engine, it should come up. So why we use image enlargers, it's really to be able to enlarge the images without losing the quality. So I'm just going to select the image that I downloaded a minute ago and then click start. Image type is artwork, upscale, you're able to go up four times as a free member, but if you want to go eight times and above, then you'd have to upgrade. Noise reduction, I leave it as none. Then you click OK. And now on Canva and ready to start creating our composition notebook cover. The first thing you do is click on create a design and you come to custom size. And we now want the width and the height and it needs to be in inches. I use KDP cover calculator. If you just type that onto Google, it should come up. And you want to enter all your details. So it's paper, but black and white interior and it's going to be white paper page direction left to right that's just how the page turns measurement and units we're going to do it in inches interior trim size and composite notebooks usually come at 7.5 by 9.25 inches page count usually I do between 100 and 120 pages calculate dimensions that's what we need here 15.52 is the width and the height is 9.5 and I have it pre-selected here so I'm just going to enter that and that's our canvas to create our composition notebook. So before I start creating my book cover, I always like to have my book template ready. If you haven't already got that, this is where to download it, then upload it onto Canva, ready to use. I've already done that. I create folders to save assets that I use frequently when it comes to designing on Canva. So I've got one folder for just book templates. And if you like, I can do a future video 
on how to create these folders. The next thing I want to do is make sure that my book template is in the background just to guide me when it comes to dimensions and uh, I like to tone it down to about 50% transparency just so it's somewhere in the background. After that go to my images that I just downloaded from Mid Journey and already been enlarged. So what I like to do with that is duplicate it and then place it on here as the back cover and then I flip it so that they look exactly the same somebody's looking at the front or the back of the book cover then the next thing I want to do is create what every Compton notebook typically would have and that's the spine so I would use a shortcut on the keyboard which is R for rectangle so we get a little rectangle there and you stretch that to fit the page make sure it's actually centered so I'll come to position center there's one last thing to do which is our cover panel where the user of the book would put their name and subject whatever other details they might want to put and as you notice i just clicked onto my folder where i've saved it and i like to have them pre-done and downloaded as a png meaning you can actually stretch it to be as big as you want it it's got a clear background with a design as intricate as this where i want to show off all the floor rules i like to put my book cover panel just in the middle of the book. Other KDB book designers that are doing really well on Amazon sometimes will place it at the bottom or right hand corner depending on your book design. But in this case I'm going to have it in the middle here. I want your book to be aesthetically as pleasing as possible so I like to edit the cover panel to just have it closely matching the images on my cover. So click on edit photo and I went for a Francesco tone of color. I decided to go for that very light bluish color because I've got a lot of blue going on in this image and that's my cover panel done the spine needs to be very closely matching some of the colors in the image going with the keywords aesthetic canva cleverly picks up your document colors makes it really easy so you click around and you'll notice it does pick up on the document colors and this was automatically picked and I quite like it I'm going to go with that but if you don't want to use any of these document colors you can also come on here and click on this plus sign which brings up this color picker and say for example you want to use this color here you hover on to what you want and there it is it just picks it up so in this case i'm just going to keep my document color as it is one last detail i want to show you is you notice it's very clear and you're able to see all the intricate details without it looking pixelated it's nice and clear so you really want to make sure you don't skip the step of image and larger if you're using mid journey to generate your images my book cover is nice and ready click on share download pdf print and usually when you go for pdf print it says best for printing that's the one i go for i like to go for cmyk it's best for professional printing only available for paid membership on canva if you're going for the highest quality work when you're designing on canva a paid membership is worth it it's a way to go you will see a link to canva where you can have a free 30-day trial give it a shot for 30 days see if it's for you our cover is now ready to upload to Amazon. So I've done an in-depth video on how to create and upload a book on Amazon from A to Z and I will link that video below. So if you're a complete beginner I would suggest you watch that video. It's going to be very helpful. We're now ready to create and publish our book on KDP. Click on create. We are creating a paperback. And once you get on this page, I just want to mention a couple tools that I use for efficiency and time saving when I'm creating my books. This is a Chrome extension called Productor for KDP. I mainly use it to help with trademark checks. Sometimes without knowing it, we may have one or two keywords that may have been trademarked and we wouldn't have thought of it. That's what I use it for. As you can see, it's linked to USPTO trademark check 
and one in Europe as well as it's quite thorough. So the other tool that I use for efficiency is called Tangent Templates. So if you make a number of books that have similar attributes like composition notebooks like what we about to do now, Tangent Templates listing helper speeds up the upload process by automatically filling out commonly used fields. It's also got a lot of other resources that are very useful in KDP like uh, interiors. I am not affiliated to them. It's a one time purchase tool, which I highly recommend. All you need to do is click on it and it comes up and just choose the title of the book that you've already pre-saved. So I've clicked on that. And now if I go into my book title, it's already been pre-filled for me. The subtitle is pre-filled for me. Obviously these are things I did ahead of time and put them on the back end of this tool. I've got my author name. I just made up a name for this particular example. I've got my description pre-filled. If I'm doing a series of books within the Vintage Botanical Illustration series, then this remains exactly the same. So that is an amazing time saver. So I own the rights. It's not adult content. I want to leave my book available to as many people as possible in this case. So I'll leave that blank. My biggest marketplace is Amazon.com. So this section of keywords words has 50 characters for each one of these boxes. You can put in as many keywords as are relevant. I wouldn't keyword stuff but try to maximize and not to repeat what's already on the title and the subtitle. Choose categories. So then continue. We will not be needing an ISBN for low cotton books. It's black and white interior with white paper. Then we choose our trim size 7.5 by 9.25. It's going to have the lead. I usually use matte for this. Upload our manuscript. Upload my cover, which we already have ready to go. Slot preview. Our book is ready to print preview. Go to thumbnail view. This way I'm able to see all the pages to make sure everything's been uploaded as should be. All looking good. Flip the first couple. Approve. It does show us printing cost, which has recently gone up. Factor that in when you're doing your pricing. This last page, if we decide on the territories. It's all territories worldwide. Primary marketplace is Amazon.com. For me, it could be different for you, so choose accordingly. That's $7.99. We're just making a dollar seventy-five. I'll leave the rest as it is. You're now ready to publish your book, and it would be showing up on Amazon in a few days. It should be live and ready to sell. That's the end of today's video. If you want to see more on how to do the process of creating and uploading books, you can watch this video next. Or if you want to see more about the method of research that I talked about, these two videos should be able to help with that. Thank you for watching. I shall see you on the next video. All the best in your KDP business. Bye now.